Let's start this video with the conclusion. The Cinetrix Cinelife C1 form factor is very compact and yet packs all the features anyone would ever need in a mobile and compact live streaming solution. Thanks to the integrated screen of the Cinelife C1, an entire live production can be managed without the need for any external screens. The Cinelife C1 comes with a built-in web interface, which allows remote control from any smartphone, tablet or computer. Thanks to the integrated encoder, not only can the CineLife C1 record and live stream in up to full HD 60 frames per second, but it can also live stream to two different destinations at the same time. On the other side, the CineLife C1 unfortunately has no ability to send a multi-view out to an external monitor, or the ability to playback media such as video or audio from an external storage device. Also, the user interface of the C1 isn't exactly intuitive and needs some time to get used to. Welcome to another review on this channel. In this video, we are taking a closer look at the Cinetrix Cinelife C1, a compact live video switcher with a built-in screen. In this video, we are first going to talk about the device's I.O., followed by the physical buttons on the device, and that should give you a pretty good understanding of what the device can do. Afterwards, I am going to highlight some of the feature highlights, as well as also talk about the things not so great with the device. This video has timestamps in the description, so feel free to skip to the part of the video which is most relevant to you. With that said, let's get started with the device's I.O. On the back of the Cinelife C1 we can find a total of 4 HDMI inputs, 2 HDMI outputs, both are displaying the program out, none of them can be used for the multi-view, one USB-C port for UVC streaming, which allows to use the C1 on a computer as if it was a webcam, one LAN port to connect to the network, and the 12 volt DC power connector. On the right side of the device, we can find two 3.5 mil jacks for the microphone inputs. These ports can also be configured to be line in instead of mic. One 3.5 mil headphone jack for monitoring your audio. One USB-C port for connecting to an external tele light box and a regular USB-A port for loading graphics onto the device or recording videos onto the storage. On the bottom side of the device, we can find a single one quarter inch screw for mounting. On the left side, we can find the power switch as well as the fan exhaust. And on the back side of the device, we can find a visa mount, which can be used to mount the device to any visa compatible monitor arms. Let's take a closer look at the buttons of the Cinelife C1. Starting at the top left, we find a lock button that can be used to lock all the other buttons on the device. So you don't accidentally switch settings or turn off your live stream. A dedicated mute button, which mutes the program. The logo button, which enables or disables a bug, or as the button says, a custom logo. The audio button brings up the audio mixer, which can be navigated using the control knob on the right side of the device, as well as the five-way rocker, or how gamer call it, the joystick, on the left side of the device. The effect button brings up a list with all the transition effects you can apply to your transition cuts. The screen button brings up a list with six predefined layouts for your video layers. The A and B button allows to enable or disable the layer or select which layer you want to send your input to. The chroma and luma key buttons enable or disable the chroma and luma key effect, which you will use when, for example, working with green screen video. The record button starts and stops the recording of the program as long as there is an external storage device connected to the Cinelife C1. The stream button will start and stop the live streaming of the Cinelife C1 to both of the configured live streaming destinations. The cam and post buttons are reserved for the PTC controls. The cam button allows to select the camera to control using the five-way rocker and the post button allows for fast recalls of the set positions. Yep, the Cinelife C1 is capable of controlling PTC cameras over a network. At the bottom, we get four dedicated program and preview buttons for input one to four. This is a welcome change to many other compact live mixers that only include one set of these buttons. Next to the program and preview keys, there is a still button, which will freeze the current frame on your program. The pattern button just below will bring the pattern to preview. While it is called a pattern, as in TV test pattern, this feature probably will be used by most to use it for displaying graphics or having a background image on certain scenes. Of course, we also find a cut and auto button, which allow to cut from 
from preview to program, either with a regular hard cut or with a selected auto transition. Speaking of transitions, not only can you use the hard cuts and auto transitions, the CineLife C1 also features a T-bar to manually transition, which is something I have not yet seen on any life mixer in this form factor and especially this price range. I do appreciate the presence of a T-bar a fair bit. And the two last buttons on the device are the fade to black button, which, well, fades your program to black, as well as the menu button, which is used in combination with the control knob just below the navigation and menu button to control the CineLife C1's menu. And speaking of the menu of the CineLife C1, almost all settings of the device can be directly edited on the device without the need for any additional computer or software, which honestly shouldn't be the exception but the norm, but here we are. In this video, we are not going through all the menus the device offers, but let me tell you, everything you would want to edit during a live production is there and can be accessed from the device itself. However, there are some settings like setting up the live RTMP destinations that require an additional device. But here comes the best thing about it. You don't need to install any software. The device is hosting a web interface by itself which can be accessed by any computer, smartphone, tablet, you name it, as long as it's in the same network, which is just amazing. Speaking of the web interface, the CineLife C1's web interface not only allows for changing of those settings, the web interface gives you full remote control of the device. All the physical buttons of the device are available in the web interface, including the T-Bar. In addition of controlling the device's button, the web interface also allows you to configure transitions, set up custom scenes by dragging the two layers in position, creating masks either by using predefined shapes or by creating custom rectangular masks, setting up chroma and luma keys, set the RTMP stream destination, upload graphics for the pattern and logo features to be used, fully control the audio mixer, as well as some basic device settings like upgrading the firmware, setting the system language, setting the system time, or setting up the network settings of the device. Let's take a look at some of the feature highlights of the CineLife C1. While having four inputs and two dedicated program outputs is a nice thing to have, I think a feature that I was not expecting from a device that compact and especially in that price range is the ability to multi-stream to multiple live streaming services at the same time without the need for additional software or online services. Another feature that I did not expect from a device like the CineLife C1 is the ability to control up to four PTC cameras over the network. Usually, for this purpose, one has to buy a dedicated PTC controller, which in many cases costs more than the C1 itself. Another highlight that is not really unique to the CineLife C1 but deserves to be pointed out is the ability to use the device on a computer using UVC streaming. Sure, this device is made for live streaming, but it can be so handy to just connect it to a computer and use the device as if it was a webcam. I already talked about it, but the fact that the CineLife C1 has dedicated preview and program buttons as well as a T-bar is just nice and makes the device feel complete. Also, the fact that the device is hosting an entire web interface to remotely control it is, simply put, amazing and should be the standard for any device like this. Let's now take a look at the things which I found are not so great with the CineLife C1. While I appreciate that the device comes with two HDMI outputs, the fact that none of them can be configured to house the multi-view is unfortunate, especially when combined with its remote control capabilities, an external multi-view would make a lot of sense. Another feature which is currently missing from the CineLife C1, which I would love to see, is the ability to playback videos or audio from an external storage. Currently, the only way to do this is to use up one HDMI input to capture the output of a media player such as a computer. The interface and especially menu structure of the CineLife C1 is not exactly intuitive for new users. It took me a fair bit before I was able to find the settings I was looking for. But after a day or two of working with the device, I actually was able to find everything I needed. Lastly, a potential problem, which in most use cases probably never will be an actual issue, is the fact that the web interface cannot be password protected. Meaning, if you are on a big production, with multiple people having access to the same network, 
there would theoretically be nothing stopping anyone from just ending your livestream, or even worse, mixing in some bad cuts. To be fair, the CineLife C1 probably mostly ends up in one-man or two-man live productions where this really shouldn't be a concern. Let's get to the conclusion then. Overall, the CineLife C1 impresses me with its compact form factor and yet almost complete feature set. There is not a single thing that is missing from the device that would be a showstopper for me. All the negative points which we have discussed in this video can be worked around. Would it be good to have an external multiview? Yes, of course. Am I unable to produce a live show without an external multiview? Absolutely not. I can work with the built-in screen. To me, it is remarkable that a device with all those features can be bought for a lower price than most modern smartphones. If I wouldn't already have a small event rack with a dedicated streaming computer, capture cards and so on, I would seriously consider using the CineLife C1 for any of my live productions. And while I don't like saying that one product is worse than another, I would use the CineLife C1 over my Atom Mini Pro ISO every time of the day. The only situation in which I would still use the Atom Mini Pro ISO over the CineLife C1 is when my job is to record four cameras simultaneously without the live production aspect. In the end, you need to know if the features of the CineLife C1 fit your use case or if you could potentially buy an older device that might be a little less expensive but also feature less features. For me, the Cinetrix CineLife C1 gets a clear recommendation for anyone looking into a small, lightweight and compact solution to do live stream productions with up to four inputs. You can find a link to the device in the video description down below. Thanks for watching.